What was your reaction when you heard that Andre Berto had tested positive? You know, as of right now, man, I just want to fight. Okay, let's get started. You can stand it. I'm off. I'm off. On paper, the sport of boxing is simple. Two men square off in a ring. Their preparation, their strength. Determining who is the better man. If only the sport of boxing were so simple. 14 months ago, an unexpected champion emerged from the state of Kansas and put the world on notice. There would be a new contender for the title of pound for pound king. But like his sport, Victor Ortiz's time atop his division has been anything but simple. Witness the tumultuous journey is not an option here. of a man in search of redemption on all access. Victor Ortiz. As 2012 began, Victor Ortiz was enjoying his newfound celebrity. I was the ultimate screw. You wouldn't know it from his smile, but just three months earlier, his WBC belt was taken by Floyd Mayweather. Now, the prospect of battling Andre Berto in a rematch of his signature victory promises Ortiz the chance to regain his reputation. What do you think about seeing uh, Berto again? Good friends with Andre. I have no hate, no remorse toward any boxer, not even Floyd. I don't need that kind of weight on my shoulders. I'm involved in a, in a world of a lot of uh, unnecessary talk. At the end of the day, I just take it for what it's worth. I get ready and I prepare. I let him run his mouth and, hey, that's that. We at Team Ortiz will convey nothing but respect to Andre Berto. Victor will raise his standards in this fight like never before. And if Andre thought he ran into a freight train last time, this time he will feel the concussion of a nuclear bomb. You know, his team, they talk a lot and they really boost him up to talk a lot. You know, when I look at him, when I see him face to face, I think mentally he's very weak. We here right now for a reason. Go time, you know that. Go time, you know that. You just got your chance. It's gonna happen again. I promise that. I know. It's go time. When they put us face to face, because I start getting shaky, dog. I feel like just <laughs> say something else. Like when he started talking to me, like yeah, yeah, it's about to happen again. I said you're right. I'm gonna beat you again. Sometimes you can't really enjoy a great victory unless you go through a great war. Victor has the media talking negatively against him again. He has the malfunction that happened during the Mayweather fight. I'm being counted out once again. Once again, I'm too nice. And so now that inspires him to redeem himself. They asked me, what did you think about the Floyd Mayweather? I mean, you did come off headbutting him. I said, yeah, man, I threw that, I threw that headbutt with every intention of breaking his nose. I was like, how are you going to expect to nail me 16 times with your elbow? And the least I could do is get you once. I wasn't in the wrong, though, right? No, absolutely not. That almost made me feel bad because... No, don't feel bad. You're, you're trying to be a dirty fighter. You're going to go down in history as a dirty fighter. No. I'm like, here's the thing. I had that animosity in the ring yeah. during the battle. That's where it stayed. It stayed yeah. in Vegas. What happens in Vegas stays, in, stays Vegas. in Vegas. That's right, and you move on. Far from the violence of his chosen sport, Ortiz has made his home in this tranquil oceanfront community. Here, his fight moniker, Vicious, seems incongruous with his laid-back lifestyle. All right, guys, I'm going to get going. Hey, you guys should stay here as long as you guys need to. I'm, I'm just going to bounce. Let's get, let's get. When we fight, I just turn into something else. It's like a switch. I become kind of heartless in there. I enjoy all the pain that I cause. I enjoy the blood that I see from me or from him. I'm telling you, it's something else. I'm an animal in there. In April of 2011, moving up in weight and in search of a career-defining victory, Ortiz entered the ring against the highly touted and undefeated Andre Berto. People believed that we were going to be defeated. Berto was heir apparent to the pound for pound kingdom. He was going after Mayweather and Pacquiao, and we proved them all wrong. I remember as if it were yesterday. And the day I went into Golden Boy and said, I want the fight with, with Berto, everybody's jaw dropped and said, career suicide. I love the fight. 
Victor just hit so hard. He got him good. Victor took his heart. He's probably thinking to himself, Jesus Christ, this kid is uh, not the kid that I was expecting. Stay off the well, You're a beast, now show these people. This is what boxing is famous for, these kinds of fights. I'll be honest, it excited me seeing this fight again, <laughs> back and forth. The fight by this point has been a brutal one. <laughs> Berto threw his right hand very, very good, and he got him right in the cheek. Boom, he connects nice. Ooh, he connected me really nice right there. <laughs> that was really nice. I'm sure anybody else, he probably would have put their lights out. Bap. Right over the top of that straight left. Thought I killed him. I couldn't believe he got out. The people was remembering when he fought Madonna. That's why everybody said that he, Victor didn't have a heart. He does have a heart. Bigger than Berto. The infamous round six. Everybody thought this fight was gonna end right here. Here we go, buddy. I'm done running, all right? He's hurt. Referee lucky to try to stop at any time. But he comes, he comes. He comes like a bull. That's ridiculous. Woo, timber! Boom, I floor him. I looked at him and I just said, ooh, that looks like it hurt. <laughs> this is a full-on war from one to 12. I'm stopping at nothing, you know, I just want this so bad that I kept thinking to myself, even if both of my eyelids were ripped open and just gashed, I didn't care. That belt was coming home with me that night. The whole time, though, I kept thinking, I'm the new. I'm the new WBC champ. He did what I told him to do, and he would be the best 147 fighter at that time. I do not make excuses. We lost. Victor fought his ass off and fought a better fight. It was one of the sweetest victories I ever felt. He was such an underdog. He came out of his shell, and he came out of his shell for one of the big belts, too. The WBC Welterweight Championship of the world. I still remember that day like it was yesterday. My manager was talking to me. You did it, baby. <laughs> Cried with me, too. <laughs> He's crying right there. My little brother's in the background. Knuckleheads in Kansas grew their first welterweight champion of the world that night. How about you chop them up like in a plate? And then, because I'm going to get the meat right here. That fight it was the best moment of my life. Just to see my brother accomplish something that he's been trying to get for the longest. He'd always tell me, you know what, bro, we're going to be world champs one day. Watch, just watch. Hey, dude, that looks really good. I love it. Nah, that's not for you. <laughs> this one is especially delicious for you, Mr. Vicious. It's so plain. <laughs> is it us? That's you. This kid definitely uh, belongs on TV with Emerald or something. You don't have nobody cooking for you. You kind of have to. It's more like survival of the fittest. <laughs> I've been doing this whole new nutrition thing since day one. Huh? I would do anything for my brother. He means the world to me. He's a hell of a fighter. Today or tomorrow, he decides to become a violin player. I'm gonna be helping him with his music notes, let's say. <laughs> I'm, I'm still gonna be right next to him no matter what. When I was a kid, it was pretty tough. I was seven years old when I got home from school and we came home to an empty house. My mom had left and no, no uh, goodbye from her or anyone. And my father, he'd come and go months at a time my brother and sister and myself in this trailer with no electricity, no nothing. That's why, that's why I grew up, that's why I lived, you know? That anger and animosity, I kind of channeled it into boxing, only boxing. I think boxing really saved me in the end. This is a sport for the poor. That's how it was described to me years ago. And uh, we fight to become something great. The first workout of a typical day in training camp starts at sunrise, proving there's no shortcut to athletic success. All right, guys, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Catch him, catch him, catch him. Stay motivated, stay focused, stay champion. Get real strong, Victor, get real strong. You're the best, you're the best, you're the best. How's it going, how's it going? World. Get committed, get inspired, get successful. I'm getting tortured by my coaches right now. It's all right. Go. Oh! He's pretty quick. 
we have a lot of guys that come out with them, a lot of fighters, and nobody's been able to keep up with them yet. After the Berto fight, a lot of people said, wow, that was great. You know, Victor was driven, he was possessed, he wasn't going to be denied. And then two weeks later, Oberto had an off night, the drug accusations. They said, there is no way I could have beaten Andre Berto in the fashion that I did unless I was on steroids. My team and I took that as a very big compliment. You know, if these guys are thinking that you're cheating to get as good as you are, you're doing something right. I think we're going to get in shape. Hoorah! Hi, right, coach. <laughs> <laughs> good work. You don't want to get in shape, man. That was, okay. That was, I'll get him. I'll get him sooner or later. You will, man. You take care, bro. You will. Victor Ortiz is a nice guy, but I'm sure after this incident with Floyd Mayweather Jr., he's learned that inside that squared circle, there's no friends whatsoever. Some fighters would have took my belt and said, you think we can warm up about 10 times and you know, go fight some fighters that maybe we can get our way with? Me, what do I do? I capture the world championship and I said, let's go for the best pound for pound ever. I went for Floyd Mayweather. It's actually my first time watching this. And by this point in time, I, I started losing my respect toward him because uh, I started seeing this look of panic in his face. See, there you go, I start catching him. Elbowing me, see that? That's two elbows back to back. He does a little sleek thing when he throws. It looks like some kind of guard, but it's really not a guard. It kind of comes really quick. I kept telling Cortez, elbow. He said, keep fighting, Ortiz, keep fighting. And the elbow lands, and it, it was hurting. So ref ain't stepping in. He's not saying much. So I took it into my own hands, and I, I released the headbutt. It was the wrong thing to do, but at the same time, when the ref doesn't step in for you, you can't be that cool anymore, you know? I apologize so much because I'm not a fighter that does that. You know, I, I that was all new to me. When I'm wrong, I know I'm wrong. So I finally turned into a human being for a split second. wasn't even looking. I just remember looking, and I was like, really, Floyd? Come on, dog, really? I didn't see how me reaching the pinnacle can, can be cut so short by, uh, by something that foul, you know? You don't beat a champion with his hands down. I don't want to do this anymore. I want to leave, man. I don't want to see that much face anymore. Yeah, I just upset the shit. I, mean, I can't stand that. We've been summoned by uh, the Nevada State Athletic Commission, and it's a uh, it's a uh, licensing hearing. It has something to do with what happened in the previous fight, and we have no problem being here. That's why I kind of dislike giving interviews sometimes because. You say one thing, but they take out a certain portion of the sentence, and then pretty soon they're brainwashing the world. Victor, could you please come forward? <clears throat> this commission has the jurisdiction to evaluate your character and your ability to participate in unarmed combat. I was trying to break his nose, 100%, because he nailed me 16 times with his elbow. You want to get dirty? I got dirty. At the time that you gave that interview, did you hope to continue as far as with your fighting career? Yes, ma'am. Can you explain that or, uh, I guess, answer the basic question of what in the hell were you thinking? In the heat of the moment, I don't know. I just, I lost it. I, I took one too many elbows. My eye was by then closing on me. I'm not a dirty fighter. I never have been. I don't care what your opponent does. You leave the response to the referee in this state. Yes, sir, I will. All right. My motion is to grant a license. In addition, we hold $100,000 of his purse, subject to an investigation. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion's carried. Thank you. My best to you. Thank All you. Right, Thank let's, you. Uh, let's move on. Uh, How tough was it for you to sit through this? They really went after you hard. It's OK. You know, I sit back and think about it. Six years ago, three years ago, I didn't even have $10,000. Nowadays, um, you know, I'm just blessed to be in this position. I'll be OK. 
We're gonna fight, man. Knock somebody out. I'm ready. Oh. Distractions and uncertainty are no longer a part of camp. Are you feeling like a Jayhawk this morning? Go! Now the countless hours of training are about to pay off in what will be the biggest bout of the new year. All right, let's go to work. Ortiz versus Berto, too. Except this is boxing, and you should always expect the unexpected. Yesterday, uh, I was in my seventh round spar, and I just heard a pop. I look down and see my muscle curl up. And I know exactly what happened. Well, official diagnosis is that he tore a portion of his bicep just above where the tendon goes into the muscle. Those look too good, huh? He got lucky that this is not going to require surgery right now. My manager says, hey, Vic, can you sit down for me real quick? We're having a little bit of an issue with this fight. And I said, I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> What's going on? Berto's torn bicep means a four-month delay. But Ortiz chooses to forego a new opponent. He's building his legacy, not padding a resume. When this fight happens, I just know that this, this fight will definitely be another great one. In the meantime, Ortiz finds a new way to test himself. I just put my nipple protectors on. <laughs> <laughs> it's about 4.30 in the morning. We're excited, a little jittery. As expected, you know, the adrenaline's up, but we're prepared. I feel like I'm about to spar 12 rounds, man. A little bit of nervous jitters? Oh, no, no, no. I don't get nervous when I spar. I'm just, I just know it's, it's a long sparring session. <laughs> we're doing it. Well, I always tell Coach Danny that I'm working out. He never believes me. <laughs> well, now it's proof. That's right, Coach Danny, we're working out. It's five in the morning. And it's cold. Fighters kind of put themselves in a bubble, and their bubble consists of boxing, 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 boxing. I'm not one of those. During all this time off, I put myself in the LA Marathon. Right, let's go, do it again. I was given limbs for a reason, so why not use them? This is the first time we do it as a team, yeah. And I think going through these adversities together is a real good thing because it only makes us stronger. They're a little different than boxing, so it's all good. Bert's so your best match up He'll probably hit the wall a little sooner than most because he's gonna push it a little bit more, knowing his competitive nature. We call it dancing with the devil at about mile 18. Your body runs out of fuel and it starts eating its own self. Oh, Definitely hurting, man. Ouch, 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 ouch. Oh well. Champ soon coming at you once again. My respects to all the runners, man. Jesus. Hey. What was your time? Uh, 323. Hey, congratulations. Hey, too much. It's way harder than, than fighting Berto, that's for sure. Wow. Jesus Christ, man. That was, uh, that was good, though. It's pretty awesome. People try to push each other as much as they can. And that's why I like doing things like this. Um, in boxing, it's, it's not necessarily like that. It's like, I hate you. I hate you. Don't talk to me. Here's how life is supposed to be lived, and I just have fun with it. Maybe you leave Orlando behind. Ah, oh, shh. The parking lot. <laughs> I left Orlando in the parking lot. All right, guys, take care. Hello. OK. Uh... Things are going real bad out here. It's about mile 15, mile 16, but uh, I'm not quitting. I don't care if I have to crawl through the finish line. This is no longer about time no more. Now this is about personal internal resolve. Feeling good? Yeah, yeah, I'm feeling a lot better. What's the workout plan this week? A little bit of strength and conditioning workout. Mm -hmm. Getting stronger. He is at that, that phase now where he can start strengthening and stressing that tissue. And as he's started to do that, it's responded well. So, uh, here with uh, Victor did yesterday, 26 miles yesterday. Oh, that's beautiful. Somebody should call Victor's conditioning coach up on the negative returns of long distance running and training. Hey, Victor, when this fight's over and you're on your comeback, give me a call. I'll help you out. I'll train you right. You know, marathon is a marathon. Fight game is a fight game. It's all about these right here. There ain't gonna be no running. All right, drop it, we're done. 
Shake it out. Far from the California coast, Ortiz returns to his roots. The first stop, the one place he can always call home, the gym. Ready? Woo! Three, two, one, go! Kansas is a, is a great getaway for me. This is just a four days that I got away from my coaches, but they've been keeping tabs on me. One of my coaches last what? night, what'd you do today, Vic? I said, dude, I killed myself in the gym. What? Just like that, again. Oh, nice. well, you know, you need to slow down. You're at 731, doing good. You need to take it easy, you know. Go, 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 go. And I'm like, no, I'm fine. Nice. Killed it. This is my fourth workout of the day, so kind of tough. <laughs> Victor literally just pulled up yesterday straight from the airport and was like, hey, I, uh, I want to work out. Like, cool. Do it, buddy. Do it. He's doing 500 pounds power lifting. I enjoy being around positive people that work as hard as one does. It's like, that's just, that's it, you know? That's home. Guys, gather around. I'm about to power lift this bitch. You see that? I did it so fast, you didn't even see that. Nice time to be in Kansas City. Uh, it's not bad. The University of Kansas has always been a part of me since I was a little kid. I mean, I obviously didn't have the lifestyle to pursue college. I had to do other things. I had to prioritize work and, and boxing, you know? I, I stopped the degree because of the fact that I got signed to Oscar De La Hoya. Yeah. And when that happened, my career just started going up, and then it was like a choice between school and boxing. And I just said, I'm going to put school aside. That building's there for easily 500 years. I'm only in boxing for so long, you know? So nowadays, I kind of want to challenge myself a little more. Why not be a professional athlete and have my college degree? Well, guys. I've known Vic for the last seven or eight years. He's got the right combination of humility, skill, and articulation. And SIGEP, we call it a balanced man. I'm pretty excited about tonight. I am getting initiated into the Sigma Epsilon fraternity house. I don't really know what to expect. Uh, I've seen the movie Old School, and <laughs> you see some, some crazy stuff on movies, but I hope it's nothing like that. See you on the other side. Uh, I know a lot of people always think about fraternities and they have a negative connotation for hazing and all these kind of things, and it's not the old animal house kind of look. So fraternities so have changed. Be, you're not going to be spanking him with, like, cricket bats or anything? Would you spank Victor Ortiz? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you might get hit in the face, you know, and I'm so no. <laughs> These are great friends of mine, and uh, I just joined part of my family, so I can't let my uh, my brothers down now. I have them stamped on my shorts, so Berto, get ready, buddy. With doctors declaring Andre Berto fully healed, the fighters converge on the Staples Center. Almost one year to the day from their first bout. Going go to bed a little late. Yeah, it's all good. Super late. It was uh, the last night, man. I, uh, training camp starts officially, so reality starts to sink in a little bit on him. Just hope that he doesn't cancel once again. We are now all set for June 23rd. Anytime I see my opponent, it's like a dog. It makes your hair stand up from your neck, you know? It's just like, I don't, I don't like you right now. <laughs> so I know what I got to go do. Don't kiss me now. You're doing more than that, sir. So. Yeah, it sounds good. It does. Well, everyone, welcome back to Team Ortiz, where we free our minds from limiting beliefs, negative thoughts, and negative hey, people. We need to do dishes and stuff. We man. will. As soon as we get back, we'll go ahead and uh, get this place There's no we in set this up. doing dishes. Yes. I'm not doing it. Well, I'm not doing it neither. <laughs> so I guess we're not doing this. <laughs> we're back in camp, right? And when we're back in camp, we come together as a team. It, it creates a sense of camaraderie. Costa, Coach Danny. Hey, is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the camp is going to be almost the same. The only difference is that uh, he's more hungry. He wants to get his whole name back. I feel sorry for Berto because he's caught us twice like this. Last time, you know, everybody was still saying, oh, he's yeah. not going to do it. He's an underdog. Yeah, so he has something to prove, now right? He's got something yeah. to prove again. Poor, poor Andre both times. Yeah. With the camp's energy focused on the task of beating Berto, news from elsewhere in the boxing world would foreshadow their own fate. Peterson got popped for steroids. Yeah. Cool, 
Steroids for what? Steroids for what, Zach? Work hard, man. I eat thin still vitamins, so I don't even know. That's right. Less than two weeks later, the talk of the boxing world hit closer to home. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, let's get started. As most of you know, Victor Ortiz and Andre Berta were undergoing voluntary anti-drug testing for the June 23rd bout. Unfortunately, Andre Berto has tested positive for a banned substance, so he is definitively out of the fight. Uh, fortunately, we were able to save the event. We have a new opponent, Josecito Lopez, who's fought on Showbox for us before. The fight and the event will be going on as scheduled. The first thing that entered my mind, here we go again, a fight's canceled, you know? It's, it's, it, if it was the first time, the second time, but now we're going into a nine month absence in the ring. I, I had to fight to keep the day. They are trying to offer me to fight in August. I said, no, 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 no. That I've been killing myself in now two consecutive training camps. Then things start happening to him psychologically, physically, this, this thing called ring rust. As a camp, we have a kind of a motto, train, fight, win. That's the most important thing. Train hard, put on the best show that you can that night, and come out victorious, and everything else will take care of itself. I need my music, coach. I can't function without music. anything. The hope and the belief and everything's still there, the hunger. The only thing that I kind of miss out on is putting someone to sleep. Our dear friend, Berto. Oh, sorry. Berto. Sorry. I'm not gonna sit there and, and criticize him and do this and that. I take it as a compliment. If you gotta be on Royce to fight me, that's one huge compliment from me. See that? Steroid free. Out of every name possible mentioned, there was one person who wanted to step it up and said, let's do this, Josecito Lopez. Josecito Lopez says, I'll take this chance. And it's almost like his rocky moment. And it makes him a dangerous fighter. Yeah, Josecito has nothing to lose and everything to win. Josecito's in the same position I was a year and a half ago against Berto. I know what it's like to be there. So I work extra hard. He's a hungry fighter, so am I. He wants what I have, and I ain't giving it to him. Fourteen months ago, on a rainy night at the Foxwoods Casino, Victor Ortiz disregarded the odds to achieve his dream of becoming a world champion. But after that perfect night, Ortiz's journey has taken every wrong turn possible. You don't beat a champion with his hands down. The official diagnosis is that he tore his bicep. Alberto has tested positive for a banned substance. But when your life has taken you to the darkest corners of human existence, the ability to see light on the horizon is the most important skill of all. I'm a force that's unstoppable, like it or not. Many years ago, I was left by everyone that supposedly loved me. I'm here for a purpose. And uh, whatever comes my way, I'm ready for it. Ortiz's final chapter has yet to be written. For boxing is a sport where men create their own destinies. And it is here, inside the ring, where Victor Ortiz will write his own ending. Don't miss Victor Ortiz versus Josecito Lopez, June 23rd at 9, only on Showtime.